all the participants to this two days uh, webinar at the end of the semester at the end of the academic year uh, several students uh, they approach us and inquire about uh, uh, where they can actually look for when it comes to information on pursuing higher studies uh, after completion of their bachelor's program uh, this is a uh, say a, a regular phenomenon all our teachers uh, are approached by the students who are looking for further studies abroad and uh, keeping this in mind that idea came that why we should not be organizing uh, a two days uh, uh, a program a webinar kind of event where we can invite the uh, experts and the faculty from the uh, universities abroad which can give the first hand uh, guidance or information to the students that how they can plan for their higher studies abroad so keeping uh, this uh, object in mind that this particular webinar has been uh, uh, conceived and uh, i'm sure that uh, next two days uh, you will have a lot of uh, information a lot of interaction with the speakers who are going to be on this platform uh, the, the the very idea of uh, pursuing masters or the higher studies after graduation is that uh, uh, during the course of your studies uh, you have become a little more interested in certain specialized uh, uh, areas of discipline of architecture and you want to pursue the uh, further uh, studies in that particular uh, specialization uh, sometime uh, many time uh, the master studies are at, uh, are pursued by the aspirants uh, to to give a definite path to their future career so i think these are the two major uh, reason two major objectives for which the students normally look for higher studies whether they are joining the institutions in india or abroad um, a brief advice i would like to uh, uh, give to all the aspirants is that first you should be uh, looking for uh, the 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 duration of the course because if you look at uh, the duration of the program uh, it may it varies from uh, two semesters to four semesters say one semester to two say two uh, <coughs> one year to two years that, that would be normally the duration of the course uh, every program uh, master's program has a certain required or mandatory uh, credits that has to be taken up by the students and they would have the choice to complete that in the period of uh, two semesters sometimes three semesters depending upon the opportunities available or the situation available they can complete the required credits uh, in the in course of uh, two years uh, normally i advise to the students when they came they come to me for uh, seeking uh, suggestions on this aspect i would normally tell them that see uh, if you are just going uh, going for the masters just to enhance your uh, understanding of certain discipline or specialized in certain discipline the duration may not be of a uh, a big uh, uh, consequence in the sense that sometime uh, in a in a academic year of uh, 12 months uh, the the program is squeezed uh, in form of three semesters sometimes it is only two semester uh, the students who normally go to europe and the uk and the other programs are normally of one year duration and sometime uh, this becomes a issue when they come back with the one year program or one year degree uh, and they come back to india and if they are looking for especially if they are looking for the teaching positions in indian universities then this this uh, crops up as an issue and uh, sometimes the authority says that the one year program um, one year degree acquired from the abroad is not equal to two years program uh, for two years uh, uh, degree courses in india so if you are particular about or if you are looking for the teaching positions in india after your masters or the strength of your masters i would advise that they should be going for the programs which are of two semester uh, sorry which are of the two year duration or the four semester but depending upon how how you are placed in a given environment of the university you can plan your uh, program uh, you can complete it in a period of uh, two semester or you can extend it uh, for the four semester also so depends another important consideration you would be keeping in mind uh, that uh, uh, which which area uh, of discipline you want to specialize in uh, there are there are several several uh, um, specializations specializations are available across the universities 
but uh, uh, what what one what one has to be uh, conscious or aware aware of is that uh, what is the theme or the philosophy around which uh, the program evolves or it has been uh, developed you would you would find that the, the the masters program for architecture graduates are offered under different uh, uh, faculties in the universities you may have the ms programs available under the faculty of applied science and technology if you look at the uh, the universities in normally in in germany or europe you'll find that uh, the masters program in architecture are attached to the faculty of applied sciences okay the program might be offered by the faculty of art culture and humanities you also have the masters programs offered to architecture graduates under the faculty of engineering and physical sciences and of course the faculty of architecture faculty of interior design faculty of built environment now why it is important because uh, this this very fact that which under which faculty the program is uh, uh, being offered that would determine the focus of the entire program okay so you you have to be very clear very very careful in choosing the program that okay under what uh, uh, faculty the program is being offered and what will be the main focus of the program okay now if you are if you are looking for the uh, the degree in the terms of the nomenclature at the end of what degree you would be what degree you would be uh, awarded so there are several nomenclature which are used across the universities across the country you might be awarded the degree of ms uh, if you extend it it is like msc master of science uh, you have the degrees uh, something called the master of arts in architecture master of planning master of architecture master of research in architecture master of technology okay so depending upon uh, say uh, what kind of what is the what is the nature of the program what is the content uh, that is being incorporated in the in the curriculum the degrees are provided with the specific nomenclature okay now uh, the thing is that if you look for the if you are looking for the specialization uh, uh, areas specialization areas you will find that there are number of specializations are available in india itself various if you look at i think we are going to have an exclusive program on say a master studies in architecture uh, in indian universities but if you are looking for the masters program abroad outside the country then probably you should be looking for the some of the innovative programs which are not available in our country like i, I was looking at some of the programs in some universities which i find that they are very very they are very innovative and they are very new in the terms of the idea like i can see that you have a masters program in bio integrated architecture at bartlett uh, school of architecture london you you also have another interesting program called the bio digital architecture which is offered at the international university of catalonia and then you have uh, the urban space and mobility that is master of design program in urban spaces and mobility or interaction designs so if if you want to have the conventional say a masters program i think you have the uh, good number of programs available at uh, the indian <coughs> indian universities but if you are looking for the masters program abroad then you should really try to take the advantage and should try to pursue the masters in the uh, in the areas of specialization where the programs are uh, innovative in nature and offers you the new avenues and the new uh, job prospects and the new uh, areas for research i think uh, uh, this is uh, a brief uh, advice uh, uh, to uh, all the aspirants who are looking for pursuing the masters program in the coming academic year uh, uh, without uh, taking uh, much time i would say that i would once again uh, welcome i think we have uh, mr uh, taran choudhury uh, waiting to take over uh, to speak to you and following uh, this session we will have the professor mark from the uh, victoria university new zealand uh, then you will have the professor john from rmit uh, australia and uh, then you will have the professor uh, mccormick uh, from western australia university and uh, the, the the last session will have uh, the presentation uh, by professor nikhil joshi from the national university of singapore and then of course uh, we'll have the presence of uh, some of uh, our alumni uh, who have pursued or completed uh, their masters program very successfully from the universities abroad
So I'm sure that uh, this two days interview program is going to be very useful to all of you. And uh, we look forward for a very interesting and uh, informative uh, interactive sessions. So thank you. Thank you all of you and welcome you all once again. Thank you, sir, for your encouraging words. Uh, I would now like to hand over the platform to my colleague, Assistant Professor Hiranmai, for a briefing on the session. Good morning, one and all. Uh, thank you, Principal, sir, for uh, joining us and initiating this uh, program. Um, I thank all the participants for joining us today. Uh, I would like to quickly throw some light on the details and the schedule that are that is visible on your screen right now. This is a two-day virtual interactive webinar creating a platform for the students to interact with professors and representatives from some of the prestigious universities across the world to understand the availability of various courses, their structures, application processes, scope, and future prospects. We have universities from Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, USA, UK, and Germany participating in this event. The overview is as uh, uh, visible, and then this has been made available to you as well. Day one will have universities from Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore, and day two covers USA, the UK, and Germany. For every session, we are also joined by alumni sharing their personal experiences in their academic journeys. Uh, we will start now with our first session conducted by IDP. Um, we are joined by Mr. Tarang Chowdhury from IDP. I will just give everybody a brief about uh, um, IDP uh, just, yeah. uh, and Mr. Tarang Chowdhury. So Mr. Tarang Chowdhury is an international education specialist and has experience of over 15 years in international education industry and is an extensively networked higher educational professional. He is currently working with IDP, heading strategic alliances vertical. His role in IDP is to bridge the gap between Indian institutes and foreign universities in order to help the Indian students fulfill their dream of education overseas. Before his present role, he was looking after the client relations and training for UK destination, where he closely worked with the UK universities and helped them build go-to-market strategy plan to engage with the students across India. His experience of international student, international recruiter, and his uh, current role helped him in gaining expertise in international student enrollment, strategic planning, business development, client relations, and global engagement. Welcome, sir. Uh, a little uh, bit about IDP. IDP is a global leader in international education services. Our success comes from, or rather their success comes from connecting students with the right course in the right university or institution and the right country. They partner with more than 700 leading universities, schools and colleges across Australia, Canada, New Zealand, United Kingdom, Ireland, and the United States. IDP Education is an ASX listed company, which is global leader in overseas education student placement for more than 50 years. It is 50% owned by Australian government universities. It is also a proud co-owner of IELTS, which is International English Language Testing System and is present in more than 30 countries across the globe. Uh, without uh, taking much of your time, we can start off with uh, the presentation by Mr. Tarang and uh, IDP. Right. Thank you so very much for uh, introducing me and uh, introducing IDP. I'll just uh, quickly share my presentation if you allow me. Yes. Just trying to do that. Just give me one second. I hope all of you can see the presentation. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir, we can see. All right, perfect. So uh, once again, thank you for uh, having me on this uh, innovative uh, platform and uh, congratulations to all of you for, uh, for uh, initiating this um, you know, innovative uh, platform. And uh, uh, as your principal has already mentioned and uh, summed all, 
you know, there's very uh, you know, few things left for me, but uh, you know, it's it's very heartening to hear, uh, you know, like your principal uh, sir mentioned that a lot of students do come to you to come do come to him to get the perspective of uh, global education, which is which is a very good thing. Which means that a lot of students are keen to understand what global education is all about. Uh, they they want to explore uh, the opportunities which are available uh, globally and uh, this kind of session which you've uh, organized uh, bringing uh, institutions bringing organizations from all across the world is uh, certainly innovative and uh, uh, i congratulate all of you for doing this and i hope that the student will certainly uh, get good insights and will be able to plan their future uh, in a in a more informed way after after listening to all the speakers from across the world, so uh, like you've mentioned, uh, IDP is um, you know a student uh, placement organization. We've been uh, in this business for about uh, last fifty years. So I'll give a brief about IDP in the in the uh, in the slides later. But uh, just to give you a perspective of each and every destination, that's what I'm here about. We also have uh, Usha, who is a business development manager, uh, present here in this call. So in case any of the students who's got any questions about uh, any of the destinations which we do, which includes uh, US, Canada, UK, uh, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, we'll be more than happy to answer them. And uh, we have offices uh, in Bangalore as well. We have three offices. So in case you would like to connect to the counselors online, We've got virtual office. You can do that as well. So Usha can give the details of the virtual counseling desk in the chat box later. Uh, in terms of destination, you know, it's very important to understand what is happening right now. Uh, like your prince, doctor, uh, like your respected principal did mention that uh, you know uh, there are not uh, all the courses which are available in India. So that is why it's uh, worth exploring. You know what are the kind of courses which are available, uh, and there's no dearth of uh, quality education abroad. So I'll cover that in my uh, slides as well. But before that, I just want to give give you some good news, uh, because we've been hearing a lot of bad news uh, in 2020 because of the COVID-19 situation. You know there were uh, all uh, negative news coming across from across the world. So I've tried to bring in some good news from across the destination, which can uh, cheer you up. So, if we look at uh, you know the the good news later, but uh, first I would suggest is that uh, you know in this COVID time one should uh, always stay positive and hopeful. And now uh, you know hopefully the the vaccine is uh, working for all all the you know countries. It's it's working pretty well in India as well. So hopefully things will get uh, get fine, get back on track. Uh, you know, this is the time in case there's a gap in your education, as in, you know, your uh, session is starting a bit late. You you should uh, gain skills online. There are a lot of courses which are available online free of charge or maybe at a nominal price. Educate yourself about the destination which you choose. You know, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, information which is available online. So try to educate yourself as much. Prepare well. Learn a language, you know, it's always an added skill uh, whenever you plan to go abroad, whether it's German, it's uh, French, it's Spanish, it's always good to, uh, you know, ha uh, learn a language. Uh, it's always uh, add value to your uh, CV, to always add value to your resume. Spend time with family, you know, that is something which is very, very important because obviously, you know, when you uh, pursue higher education, you may have to, uh, go abroad if you choose to go abroad and then you will be spending time away from your family so i think this is the best time when um, you should uh, spend time with your family uh, and the least uh, the last but not the least uh, stay fit and healthy so like i said you know i've uh, tried to bring some good news from across the world for you guys so the first news uh, you know as you all know uh, Joe Biden is the new uh, president of uh, United States of America, which is an amazing news because, uh, you know, the kind of policies which were introduced by Donald Trump, uh, you know, he will, he will definitely revisit all those policies. He will definitely relook into it. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, the kind of policies that will come uh, through from him 
uh, will be more uh, more lenient. Uh, it will be more. Uh, uh, it will be less biased uh, towards immigrants, and he will be more welcoming, uh, whether international students or immigrations. And there will be more job opportunities available for uh, all all other nationalities as well. So as you can see, you know, in despite of all all the negative news in uh, you know 1920 COVID-19 racism uh, incident, Donald Trump. You know, despite of that, U.S. continues to be one of the preferred destination for international students, and that is why uh, they hosted over one million international students. So, you know, it's uh, you know this is one of the destination. We'll obviously cover the USPs in the future slides, but uh, U.S. continues to be a preferred destination. And my advice to all the students who are listening to me today is that uh, you know uh, this is the best time as well, considering there's a new government, new president. Uh, they will be welcoming international students. There will be a lot of new policies which will be in favor of the immigrants. So do, uh, you know, uh, do explore uh, the U.S. universities as well whenever you plan to choose uh, your options for study abroad. Canada, again, you know, Canada is again one of the most uh, prof preferred destinations for Indian spe uh, students especially. Uh, how Canada have uh, structured uh, their way of... Uh, welcoming international students is that they have ensured that every university should prepare this themselves well and uh, then only they will give a license to that particular university to welcome international students so which which is a very smart move which they have done and that is why a lot of students are choosing canada as their preferred destination and uh, again you know you uh, there's no dearth of quality of education in terms of uh, Settling abroad as well. Canada is one of the destination which gives you opportunity to settle abroad uh, easily as their uh, permanent residency rules or I should say immigration rules are way lenient than, uh, you know, many other countries. Now, Australia, again, you know, uh, uh, is one of uh, the other preferred destinations for Indian students. Uh, though, uh, you know, there are still some restrictions uh, for Australia, but uh, eventually timely and gradually they are also trying to open up. There are a lot of new policies which are uh, introduced by the government which will eventually help the international students like, um, you know, they have now allowed international students to work 40 hours, uh, you know, a fortnight. So which is, again, you know, one of the signs that uh, Australia would also want uh, international students because see, you, you guys have to understand that these destinations, economy also depend on international students. So they want to have the international students in their country, uh, which is why they want to uh, com come up with new policies, new, uh, you know, uh, new relaxing rules for immigration, immigrants. So I, I think this is the best time as well, because, uh, you know, every nation, every country has got a hit of COVID-19 and post COVID-19, you know, the rules will be in favor of international students because they would want more international students in the country. Uh, New, Zealand, New Zealand is, uh, you know, the other destination, a small destination, but, uh, you know, they, they've been welcoming international students a lot. Uh, currently, they only allow about 1,000 international students. But again, you know, this is a positive sign, which means timely and gradually, they will also start welcoming international students in the future. Uh, so if we, overall, if we look at the, you know, the new report, uh, this is a report by QS, which says that with vaccine arriving, international students want to start uni early, which means obviously the the universities are uh, anxious. They are they are very eager to have the international students back to their campuses, and so are international students because they uh, want to get the quality of education. They want to get uh, that global perspective, uh, so that uh, they become job ready quickly. So now what, uh, you know, after sharing some good news about, uh, you know, the coronavirus status uh, or, uh, you know, the current uh, uh, perspective, I have tried to bring in some of the, uh, some of the other benefits, which, uh, you know, has uh, kind of uh, uh, been introduced, you know, because of coronavirus, I should say. So first is the application deadline. So a lot of universities do have an application deadline, whether it's UK, US, uh, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, so that deadline is extended. So in order to know the 
exact deadline. Like I said, you have to get in touch with the virtual uh, uh, office of IDP and we'll be able to help you with the deadline of each and every university and each and every course. The tuition fees has changed. Like I said, because they want to have more international students, there are a lot of discounts, a lot of bursaries, a lot of scholarships as well, which are being offered uh, by different universities, different destinations. So whenever you plan to apply for any particular university, do ask your counselor, you know, do, uh, uh, do a thorough research on the scholarship as well and what is the way of uh, applying us through a scholarship. Now, universities are still issuing offer letters, which means that, uh, you know, they foresee that uh, Corona will be going very soon, which is obviously expected by everyone because the vaccine is out and, uh, uh, you know, the results are uh, looking pretty good. Scholarships are available, like I said, uh, in all destinations, most of the universities are offering massive scholarship uh, opportunities. So do explore that. Online courses are also offered. So, uh, you know, because uh, sometimes uh, some of the countries are not still not able to uh, get the students in their campus because of the uh, restricted mobility of the students, uh, no international flights operating in some countries, they're still locked down like UK. Uh, what they've done is they've introduced a hybrid courses. So what hybrid courses is basically uh, half of their course or maybe some part of the course will be done online and some part of their course will be done physically when the international borders open. This does not affect the immigration rules. You know That is something which is a very, uh, very good news for all the international students. So even if you've done three months uh, online and you've done the rest of the course um, you know, in the campus, your three months still be counted in the course, which means you will qualify for the work visa as well if you eventually plan to apply for the work visa or the post-study you know, uh, visa opportunities, which a lot of countries, in fact, most of the countries which IDP does, you know, has uh, an option of uh, post-study work visa. Online IELTS examination, uh, there, there is an option to give uh, IELTS examination online as well. However, now you can uh, write uh, pen and paper uh, exam as well, and uh, it's computer delivered IELTS examination as well, which is now open, so in case you would like to know the dates, again, uh, you know, the dates, uh, we can tell you the dates as well uh, once you get in touch with the, the virtual counselors. Right, so uh, quickly uh, giving you brief on why one should uh, study abroad, you know, after giving you a good news about the coronavirus, how, you know, it has affected the global education, how it has, uh, you know, uh, how after coronavirus the destinations are uh, getting back on track. It's very important that you know, a student should understand that what is it that I am exploring the study abroad option, you know. So it's, so first is the quality of education, you know. That is something which is uh, paramount, you know. So every student who plan to study abroad should look for quality education, you know. A lot of times when I meet students or I meet parents, you know, they ask me questions like, oh, what destination should I choose? And I always tell them that it's not the destination which you should choose, you know, because you never know what is the fate, what is the future of that destination, you know, the political scenario, the, the job scenario, the, the economic scenario of that particular destination may change. But what will not change is the reputation of a, of a particular university, the courses, the course content you've chosen and of course the quality of education so the universities which you know we've got tie up with or the universities uh, you know which are uh, based abroad they've been working they've been uh, welcoming international students from centuries and if i give you an example you know university of oxford uh, you know you'd not believe that university of oxford came into existence in 10th century so these universities are time tested. They know what they're doing. They've been welcoming international students. They've been giving quality education uh, since centuries. So whenever you choose to study abroad, it's not the destination which should be in your mind or you know immigration. What you should choose is the quality of education. So that's why it's very important that you go through the content of the courses. What will be the outcome of the courses? Is there any 
internship attached to that uh, course if i am applying to that uh, you know particular uh, course or a particular university what are the accreditation that course has got what are the accreditation that university has got what are the kind of ranking what is the reputation of that uh, uh, particular institutions once you've zeroed down on that that is when you choose the uh, destination uh, you know applying for the visa is something which is not a difficult task because uh, we've been helping uh, you know a lot of millions of students every year to get a student visa uh, we can help you in uh, getting the student uh, visa easily but what is important is and what i advise to all the students is it's important that you first zero down on the course then the university and then comes the destination the second is it enhances the value of your degree so globally recognized degree will tend to make more job opportunities for you so when you've done an education abroad you do not just uh, you do not just stay as an indian student you become a global citizen because you've done a say bachelor's degree in in india you've done a masters degree from one of the other countries say for example uk or for example us then you become an international global citizen and that adds value to your uh, cv and then you become employment ready so it doesn't matter whether you stay in the country where you've studied so for example if you've studied in the uk it doesn't matter whether you you work in the uk or or not you know you can go to a developing country like uh, you know uae or maybe other countries like south africa australia you know for work purpose and they will not only recognize your degree they will respect your degree as well because they know that particular institution they know the quality of that education which you've uh, gained from that particular institution so you become employment ready so the education and work abroad adds a lot of value to your cv then uh, the research options again you know there are a lot of research options which are available in these universities so all you have to do is uh, you know just uh, once you've chosen the course once you've chosen the university you just have to uh, uh, get in touch with your faculty to ask uh, you know what are the kind of research options sometimes it's already it's all you know it's always a part of the course as well which you've chosen so you can look for that as well uh academic flexibility the last you know the education system abroad is a lot different from india it offers flexibility in terms of choice of subject from a variety of uh, topics and uh, even though it's different but they still uh, uh understand the education system of india they understand how uh, the 10 plus 3 uh, things thing work in india and they value that because they've been welcoming international students since uh, uh decades so you know you should be uh, rest assured that uh, you know the education will be not alien to you the the style of education will not be alien to you uh and like i said you know we keep doing a lot of a uh, uh, lot of activities where we get faculties from uh, you know these universities to india so that they can interact with you you can interact with them uh just to get a perspective on, on how the classes will be what is the kind of outcome you expect from the university so you know like i said uh, the things have become much easier now obviously it's always good to get in touch with your professors to get more insights on the kind of career you should choose but in terms of uh, choosing the right course right destination uh, you know we are we are there for you now if we look at uh, uh, some of uh, the intakes which are available uh, in uh, in these uh, destinations so now we are in in the month of uh, january which is a spring intake so obviously you know the lot of students who have applied for the spring intake are on the verge of uh, applying to their respective countries but the next intake is a summer intake which starts in april may uh, and some uh, some courses are available in november as well but the major intake for most of the universities most of the destination is fall intake which starts in august and september so whether it's uk it's us australia the major intake is the fall intake and uh, if we look at the timeline as well you know the timeline to apply for these university also take about 7 8 uh, uh, months so whoever uh, you know who, who any of the student who is planning to study abroad and wants to start their courses in 
September 2021. This is the right time when should, you should start exploring the options because it does take about eight to nine months in, uh, in uh, gathering all your documents in choosing the right university and choosing the right subject. And uh, all, of course, uh, you know, you have to uh, send your application to the university. University has to uh, send your uh, offer letter back. So these are some of the seven steps which we have mentioned. So uh, like I said, you know, first is select the program and the university. Once you've then done that, uh, we have to find out whether there's any admission test which is involved, whether it's uh, SAT, GMAT, GRE, IELTS. Again, you know, that is something which will be uh, told to you by the counselors. Uh, submit applications. You know, we'll help you submit the application to the respective university. Once you receive the offer letter, then comes uh, the next stage, which is apply for the student visa. For the student visa, you should have all the documents in place. You should have... Uh, whether it's your financial documents, because they check your financial ability, your uh, your academic ability, you know, the, and the statement of purpose as well. So statement of purpose is a very important document because that makes you stand apart from other students. That is the document which a lot of faculties refer to. That is the document which a lot of international officers, international uh, uh, you know, vice chancellors and all, 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 all the university staff who's, you know, involved in giving an admission to you refer to that, that piece of document. So it is very important uh, to give as much time on your statement of purpose. It's also called personal statement. And how it's done is, uh, you know, why you've chosen a course, why you've chosen a university. So first you should jot down the, the number of questions once you've jotted down the number of questions, then you should start answering them. You know, why you've chosen a course, why you've chosen a university, uh, why you've chosen a destination. When you answer them, then becomes a, a rough draft of a personal statement. Once you have that rough draft of a personal statement, then you start editing it, make it more uh, professional, uh, make it look, uh, you know, uh, uh, readable you know it should not uh, look cliched you know like uh, you know a lot of experts say that personal statement should never look cliche so uh, again you know we keep doing a lot of workshop on personal statements as well and we do have an editing team as well who suggests uh, uh, different prospects on uh, on your personal statement on your cv because that document is very important document not just to get an entry in your university but also to get an entry uh, to, a, to, a, to a destination because uh, that is the document which even the visa officers refer to. The next step is appear for a visa interview. Once you've uh, you know, gathered all the documentation, uh, you appear for the visa interview. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, some destinations uh, do not take visa interviews. Some destinations do take visa interviews. So we can prepare you for that. Uh, we do a lot of mock interviews with the students just to ensure that whatever they're answering, they're answering it right. And last is, of course, prepare to study abroad. There's a pre-departure seminar, which uh, we uh, do all the time, which uh, kind of shows you how, uh, you know, what is the kind of steps you should take when you go abroad, how to open a bank account about your accommodation, about all, all these things. So why IDP, you know, after... Uh, giving you a quick perspective about, uh, you know, some of the study abroad. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, the professor mentioned that we are 50% owned by Australian University and listed in Australian Stock Exchange. Uh, we have uh, been doing what we're doing since last 50 years. We have partnered with over 700 quality universities and institutions uh, from across across the globe. Uh, last year, IDP helped students gain entry into more than 39,000 quality courses. So like your uh, principal sir mentioned that uh, there's no dearth of courses when you plan to study abroad. You name the course uh, and you'll get it. So there are there are a huge range of courses which, which are available uh, abroad. So make sure you do your research. Uh, make sure you explore all those opportunities in order to choose your uh, preferred course. Then IDP is also a proud co-owner of IELTS examination, as I've mentioned. 
and we have over 450 test locations across 660 countries and we have more than 900 education counselors who are uh, either uh, certified uh, by British Council, you know, if, if it's a UK counselor or the other bodies, if uh, you know, for their respective destination, and they know uh, the entire life cycle of an international student, right from choosing a course to the pre-departure seminar. So this is what I've uh, I've mentioned it already in my slide, the virtual counselling. Uh, in case you're not able to visit our office. Uh, because, uh, you know, maybe the COVID situation or because of any other reason, uh, the virtual counseling is very much available. Uh, we can give you a link for that as well. So uh, you can uh, ask the counselor about your preferred course, preferred destination, accreditation, and you will be answered by our experts. So now uh, giving you a quick brief about uh, some of the destinations which uh, we do. Uh, it's, it's like I said, you know, never choose a destination, always choose a course, always choose a university, and then the desti destination should be a last choice. But it's worth exploring the USPs of the destination, which gives you a perspective in, in order to understand what is there in it for you. So if you look at Australia, Australia is, again, one of the most preferred destinations for Indian students. So Australia welcomed more than 600,000 foreign students in 2018. Uh, eight Australian universities are among the top 150 universities in the world. So that is what I was talking about when I mentioned quality education. You know, so whether it's uh, US ranking, whether it's Times uh, Higher Education ranking, Guardian, Financial Times, you know, they keep coming up with rankings with universities from across the globe. And whenever you see these rankings, you will see the universities from specifically these destinations like Australia, US, UK, right in the top 100. So if I go back to on, back on the slide, so eight Australian universities, which are also called GO8, group of eight universities, which includes uh, Monash, University of Sydney, Melbourne. So, you know, these universities are, um, are very well respected because of, because of the kind of uh, uh, quality of education they offer. And uh, it's uh, uh, obviously because they are time tested, time tested and been into existence uh, since centuries. Australia ranks as one of the most popular international student destination in the world, as I already mentioned. Uh, easy adoption of Indian education system. So like I mentioned, 10 plus two plus three, you know, they, they understand the Indian education system and they value that. And uh, so that's why they easily adopt to that. Ample scholarship for eligible Indian students. So the way you apply for the scholarship is that first you get an offer letter. So, you know, I, I would request all of you to give attention to what I'm speaking now in terms of scholarship. I know all of you would want to get the scholarship. So just quickly giving you a brief on how scholarship works is that first, you get an offer letter. The moment you get, you've got an offer letter, that is when you start applying for the scholarship. So there, there are independent bodies as well, and there are university scholarships as well. That is completely your choice, or you can apply to both. So for example, if I talk about UK destination, you know, I've studied in the UK, that's why, you know, I keep giving examples of UK. Uh, so, when I talk about UK, there are scholarship, a lot of scholarships which are offered by British Council. Uh, Shebening Scholarship, again, UK uh, focused scholarship. There are scholarship by Dr. Manmohan uh, scholarship as well. Then these are the independent bodies. But when, when it comes to the university, whichever university has given you an offer letter, you go back to the university saying, okay, I've got an offer letter. Now I would like some scholarship. What is can I get the scholarship application form or what is the process? They will send you in a scholarship application form. You again mention why you should get a scholarship. You know, a lot of times, most of the universities do offer scholarship. So it's very important for the students that once they've received the offer letter uh, from these universities, they start uh, exploring the scholarship op opportunities. Now, Australia offers part-time and post-study uh, post work rights to all eligible international students. So 
when you're a student you you can work there as well uh, and uh, you know why why it's important to work while you're there as, uh, as a part time student because it's not just monetary reason it you know uh, makes you ready for that you know that full time job you know which you will be uh, you know which you will be doing after your uh, course or uh, you know or or to get uh, say acclimatized to the work culture of a particular destination so i think it's very important to work part time and uh, of course uh, you know once you finished uh, your education you know you get to stay there in 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 that country for some time as uh, post study work opportunities are also available in australia qualifications are well recognized globally as i already mentioned uh, it's affordable and safe and multicultural uh, country because uh, you know australia gets students from across the world you know you make friends from uh, not just one country from across the world and that is how you build that future uh, global perspective so whenever you sit in front of a employer you know in that interview you do not just speak from one one perspective you speak from a global perspective and that is what the employer of uh, future look for that this, they are, whoever they are hiring they should be uh, uh, they should have the global perspective and they should see any problem any situation uh, globally so i think that is something which is very important so whenever you choose a destination uh, ensure that you make uh, friends from across the world in order to understand their culture as well Australian cities boast a high standard of living with beautiful outdoors and warm climate uh, over half a million of international students from 200 different nationalities study in Australia so some of the courses if we talk about architecture uh, like i mentioned there's no dearth of courses in these destinations so uh, we mentioned these courses uh, you know some of the courses which we have uh, managed to uh, uh explore for you uh you know again in terms of the content of these uh, content of the courses in order to get more details of these courses whether it's uh, interior architecture building surveying uh, property and real estate and law planning regional town and urban so you just have to get in touch with with the counselor they can give you uh, the relevant link of uh, these courses and you can uh, go through uh the the core uh, the course content and the accreditation as well uh now the entry requirement uh, to get into these uh, courses again portfolio play a vital role in terms of selection english language test like i said ielts examination is one of the most uh, recognized examination from uh, across the world marks card of previous academics scholarship you know as most of you would be seeking a scholarship a scholarship good scholarship is given to students who vary university to university as i have already mentioned post study work visa and 2 to 4 years stay back after completing the course depend upon the location of the university as well now job opportunity again uh, you know arch- architecture is one of uh, you know a, a very uh, renowned and very respected uh, job uh, which is offered in these countries so uh architect landscape uh, architect architectural draft person you know building and surveying technician so if you look at the weekly pay it's about 1674 uh, australian dollars uh the future growth is strong 81 person full time uh, very high skill it's considered to be a very high skilled uh, profession and uh, this is uh, the link which uh, in case you would like to uh, just have a quick uh, look you can just go to that link and check which all uh, what all kind of uh, salaries which are uh, available and what all are the organizations that offer job uh, in australia if you do uh, plan to choose australia as one of the preferred destinations uh now again coming back to the rankings so you know, like i mentioned uh, you know these are uh, some of the universities which are ranked right on the top Aust- uh, university of melbourne sydney rmit i think you've got a session as well with rmit unsw curtin university monash university again you know like i've already mentioned you know there's no dearth of quality education in these destinations now 
Moving on to the next destination, which is one of the most preferred destination for Indian students, and that is USA. And like I've uh, said it in my previous slide, this is the best time to choose USA because the time uh, is in favor of immigrants. The time is in favor of international students. There will be a lot of policies which will welcome international students because of the new, uh, newly elected uh, president. So you, you, U.S. universities are among some of the highest rated in the world and most allow you to tailor your field of study. Universities emphasizes on real world problem solving and not just theory. That is how they differ from uh, you know, Indian, Indian institutions. Career opportunities, degree from United States of America are highly regarded by global employers and many U.S. schools are also offer research on internship opportunities. Uh, diverse experience, uh, again, you know, uh, whatever I mentioned uh, in Aus for Australia also applies to U.S. as well, that you can make friends from across, uh, across the globe uh, as they also have uh, students from different parts of the world. Uh, more than 4,500 university in U.S. So U.S. is one of, uh, you know, one of the biggest destination you know, which we do. And that is why the number of university, the number of choices is massive. So as you can see, 4,500 universities are there. Uh, you know, but I'm not trying to scare you, but uh, in fact, I'm trying to show you that there is massive opportunity when you choose a destination like US. So there's no dearth of uh, courses, there's no dearth of opportunity, there's no dearth of scholarship opportunities or internship opportunity. It's just that you have to do a good research and explore as much in order to make a right dec decision. So American campuses offer supportive staff and faculty and beautiful living space, safety and security measures within the campus. So if you look at some of the master's program in architecture, uh, MARC in conservation, restoration and environmental masters in building system, MARC in landscape design, urban planning, urban design, urban housing, interior architecture, design engineering, and MR in architectural history and theory. So like I mentioned, you know, there's no dearth courses when you choose a destination uh, like US and some of the popular universities are University of California, University of Texas, Rochester, University of Pennsylvania. So, you know, you just have to do a good uh, thorough research in order to choose which university fits your now, five years BR uh, and the MRs are the only two courses recognized by the National Council of Architectural Re Registration Board of USA for granting architect license. The workforce in the industry with BR gets an average annual package of 56,900 US dollars, whereas with MR degree, uh, the compensation is 110,000 US, US dollar per annum, which is of course, massive if you compare it to any other destination. The Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics uh, projects 8.4 percent employment growth for architects between 2018 to 2028. So, massive opportunity for students who plan to pursue uh, MR in in uh, US. So, the average uh, annual uh, salary of architects increased by 6.2 percent from seven. 2017 to 2019. Uh, so again, you know, one of the reasons one should choose uh, USA as uh, their preferred destination in order to uh, pursue a master's. Students having a degree uh, in uh, master's in architecture in USA get hired in uh, various areas as Department of Railways, uh, National Institute of Urban Affairs and Housing. Uh, Postgraduate students in the field of architectures are offered a handsome amount, as I've already mentioned. So the projected job growth for architects in USA is 8% till 2008, 28, sorry. So, uh, you know, it's, so they, 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 they see that, you know, architecture is one of the profession which will definitely grow in future as well. So therefore, there are a lot of courses. They also want to invest a lot in uh, you know such professions so that they can get uh, uh, qual quality architects and that is why they want to welcome students from across the globe who can bring in um, you know skills from from across the globe
Now, uh, talking about the UK, uh, I give you a quick uh, brief about the UK destination. Why it's a good time to study in the UK as well. Though currently there is a lockdown, uh, which is announced by uh, by Boris Johnson. However, the moment the lockdown is uh, uh, is is withdrawn, uh, you know there will be a lot of international students who will be uh, you know uh, will be. Uh, studying and will be looking forward to uh, pursue their education. Two reasons: one is Brexit. You know, if I give you a quick brief about uh, Brexit, so Brexit is basically uh, UK chose to come out of the Europe, which means that European citizens will not be considered as uh, as uh, a permanent residents in the UK, which means there will be more opportunity for Indian uh, students, Indian immigrants, they, as the uh, the ground will be level for all the immigrants uh, in the UK. So that is a very good news, especially for Indians who plan to uh, pursue their education in the UK. And the second is recently, in fact, last year, they introduced post-study work uh, rights, which means any student who plan to pursue one year master's, so mind you that you, in the UK, the master's is only for one year. So any student who plans to pursue a one year master, they get to stay in the UK for two years whether you have a job or you do not have a job, that's the post-study uh, work right which every student gets when they plan to choose a master course. And it goes without saying, you know, UK is one of the destination uh, which is, uh, you know, known for its quality of education. It's, uh, it's the, the, the courses are well recognized and respected across the world as uh, they have uh, universities which have got uh, very strong research infrastructure and uh, like other destinations, UK also offers scholarship and financial support. UK also get uh, students from across uh, across the globe, and a lot of scholarships opportunities are available. And if we look at uh, some of the master's program uh, in architecture in the UK, uh, again, uh, quite uh, unique programs which you may not get in India, uh, which are offered in the UK, like landscape design urban planning, urban design, interior architecture, design engineering, MA in spatial performance and design, MA in architectural history and theory. So again, in terms of uh, getting more details about these courses, uh, uh, you can get in touch with the ITP counselors and we'll be able to share the relevant link and more information about the courses as well. Now, if you look at some of the popular universities, uh, so like I said, you know, for Australia, there are GO8 universities. For US, there are Ivy League universities. And for UK, there are Russell Group universities. So the universities mentioned here, some of them are part of Russell Group, like Sheffield, Birmingham, Bath, uh, and Newcastle. And the other, like Coventry, Greenwich, and uh, Cardiff Metropolitan University, they offer a wide range of courses. And, some, um, and of course, they have accreditation as well with some of the respected bodies uh, in the UK. So in terms of uh, career op opportunities, architecture, project management, urban design, advertising, real estate, art and design, art history. Uh, the scope of architecture in UK is huge, mainly because architect students in UK are exclusively trained in developing highly des desirable and use useful uh, visual creative design based and technical skills. Getting hold of industrial placement or work experience can turn out to be highly beneficial in the field of architecture, as I mentioned already. That uh, you know, if you, if whenever you choose a course, you know, do explore the uh, internship opportunities as well, because that adds a lot of value to your CV. As you do not just uh, you know add an education into your CV, but it adds your uh, the, the work working experience as well. So. Do, uh, do a thorough research on that. So UK post-study work visa allows international students to stay back in the UK for about two years, as I mentioned. And uh, this rule of staying in the UK after graduation will again makes the UK a topmost for international students. So uh, quickly uh, covering some information on Canada. Again, Canada is one of the preferred destinations for the students who would like to settle in that destination, who, who, who would like... Uh, to uh, you know, make uh, make that respective destination as their home for for the life. Uh, you know, they also Canada also has got some 
really high, highly uh, respectable and reputed uh, universities and have a wide range of specialized courses. Uh, so you can work part time there. There are ample number of scholarships and internship opportunities available. Uh, and uh, it also becomes a second home for you, like I said. So if, if in terms of architecture, if you look at pursuing architecture from Canada can be a worthwhile opportunity for the applicants as a country has more than 10 globally ranked universities offering the course according to QS top university. The percentage of urban and landscape architecture graduates are more than the other uh, few types. The percentage of employed graduates and graduates in architecture from Canada is more than 80%. So if you look at the annual salary of an undergraduate and a graduate ranging from 40,000 Canadian dollar to 90,000 Canadian dollar, which is quite massive if you compare to uh, other destination, with uh, 7,800 new job openings in Canada over 2017 to 2026 and 7,400 expected new job speaker, seekers, architecture as a sector is considered balanced from labor supply and demand perspective. So. There is, uh, you know, a quite a good balance in terms of demand and supply. But again, architecture seems to be one of the uh, profession in demand. These are some of the uh, universities which are which are really uh, good. Um, so Carlton, Ryerson, Windsor, Manitoba, Calgary, uh, British Columbia, Dalhousie. So these are some of the universities which are which have got good accreditations and have good uh, courses uh, as well. So career options, uh, ar architect, literally an architect is someone who has got training from an architect institute on the planning design and oversight of the construction of a building, as you already know this. Architecture design, architecture engineer, and interior design. So again, like I said, in case you need more information on that, we can uh, give you a detailed and a relevant uh, links as well. So New Zealand, as I mentioned, is a small destination currently. Uh, the international borders are not open for New Zealand, but again, having said that, they're, they're playing it very safe. They ensure that their citizens uh, should stay safe as well because of the pandemic. That's why they're slowly and gradually opening their international borders like they've recently done by allowing 1,000 international students. So again, uh, despite of uh, being such a small destination, university or uh, New Zealand offers quality education as they have some of the top universities which are uh, well ranked and mentioned in uh, some of the top rankings as well. The immigration rule in New Zealand are quite flexible. You can work part time and you can uh, get post study work rights up to three years as well. So great work for PhDs as well in case a student plan to do that. And some of the courses which are available in architecture, University of Auckland, Auckland University of Technology, uh, Victoria University of Wellington, Canterbury, and Unitech. Popular courses, heritage conservation, urban design, urban planning, architecture, engineering. Uh, career opportunities, again, massive uh, opportunities if someone is looking for architecture. Now, just giving you a quick brief on, uh, in terms of the, the, the fees or the kind of expenses which, which will be involved if you plan to study abroad. So this is the sheet you should, uh, you know, you can take a quick picture uh, if you want to, to un understand. This is just an approx idea uh, to give you an understanding in terms of the tuition fees. So if you look at Australia's tuition fees, uh, you know, uh, this is this is per annum, which means per year. So uh, 10 to 18 lakh. Canada is one of the most economical destination uh, compared to other destinations. UK is about 10 to 20 lakh. Uh, U.S. is 10 to 23, New Zealand is about 9 to 15, and so is Ireland. But like again said, you know, because of COVID-19, a lot of universities are offering scholarships. So do ensure that you get as much information about the scholarship. Average living cost is about 10 to 11 lakhs. Again, because every sector, every industry has hit, so is uh, the, the real estate. So you will get accommodation for uh, comparatively lesser price. So, you know, again, you just have to, uh, you know, get in touch with the right kind of people to give you advice on the real estate as well. In terms of post-study work uh, opportunities, you know, it is available in all these destinations, which is there on the sheet, and you can work part-time as well 
in all these uh, destinations. Now, coming back on uh, some of the examinations which you have to give, IELTS is a mandatory test which you have to give for all the destination. Uh, then it depends on uh, the university which you are or, uh, which you are planning to apply to. You know, some ask for TOEFL, some ask for GMAT, some ask for GE, GRE, and some ask for SAT as well. But for destinations like Australia. Uh, only few university asks for GMAT, uh, you know, if it's an MBA course. Uh, Canada only asks for an IELTS examination. Uh, again, for other destinations, it depends on the university, which uh, may ask for a TOEFL examination or GMAT. Again, you know, our counselors will be able to give you more information on that. Now, quickly, uh, giving you a brief about, uh, sorry, IELTS examination. It's, a, as the professor mentioned, it's an international English language testing system. It's one of the most popular English language tests. It opens the door to academic and professional opportunities, and it's a pioneer of English language uh, skill test. It's accepted by 10,000 organizations in 140 countries. There are about 3 million tests taken uh, last year. The only English language test available both in paper and computer. So like I mentioned in my previous slide, there's a computer-based IELTS examination as well, which you can choose. So there's an upcoming IDP uh, virtual education fair, and uh, there will be uh, universities from across the globe who will be participating in this uh, education fair. So uh, it's, a, of course, a virtual event. You can take part in it, and it's free of charge. We do not charge uh, students for any of our services. And uh, you can get information about a preferred cho choice of course, preferred choice of uh, university, from this uh, event. Now, I'll just quickly show you a testimonial from one of the students. Right, so as I said, these are some of the students who attended our virtual uh, education fair and uh, they, they got really good insights. In fact, you can talk about scholarship, you can talk about the courses, you can talk about internship and all the queries which you have in mind uh, as there will be representatives from all the destinations who will be participating and uh, just by sitting uh, you know, at your, you know, at your home, you can interact with them for as much, uh, you know, for as many questions as possible. So at the end, uh, you know, I'd uh, again, I uh, would like to introduce you to our uh, business development manager, Usha. Uh, you know, her uh, email ID is mentioned on the screen and so is her phone number. So in case you have any query about IDP, how you should get in touch with uh, the counselor, about our offices, about the events, you know, she's the person you can get in touch with and she can provide you all the information. So here I am trying to stop the screen. So we can, you know, keep it open for students to have questions. Any students who'd like to get more details for USA or UK, Ireland, or uh, I don't know, any destination with regards to architecture programs, anything, you can you know, put your questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and speak. Um, I would like to quickly thank uh, uh, Mr. Tarang for this detailed uh, session because we had sent out a registration form to all the participants where they could pose a few questions if they had any. And I'm quite uh, happy that most of the questions have been answered uh, through your presentation. So thank you so much. 
um, and like uh, Usha ma'am suggested, we can take a few more questions from the audience. Uh, if not, I could read a few from the ones that I have. Okay, maybe I will initiate it. A um, couple of them have asked uh, about the number of years of field experience that they would need before applying for masters, especially in architecture. Uh, if you can take up the question for yeah. us. Uh, um, uh, Mahesh or Sudha, can you take up this and answer this? Uh, yeah, Usha. Um, so in respect to uh, US, uh, universities doesn't ask specific work experience as such. But then uh, it definitely helps them when they are looking out for an internship or a full-time job later. Only students who are from a non-background from architecture, they ask for uh, work experience from architecture free. Otherwise, their education um, history is more than enough for the university to consider. <laughs> Yeah, so in terms of UK as well, so most of the universities will prefer the freshers, so that they will not ask any experienced students. Uh, a couple of them have asked if uh, separate uh, preparation is required for colleges such as MIT or the Ivy League. Um, separate, um, see, um, as in U.S. university itself, uh, it is not for MIT or any of the Ivy Leagues. On a whole, U.S. universities make decision on a holistic approach. They just don't um, consider your uh, CGPA alone. The other parameters in the applications also matters to them. A strong portfolio, definitely, and a very strong SOP matters to them. Put together. If you are able to make it to MIT, then definitely yes. There is no um, particular parameter that uh, uh, admission decision com committee would be looking forward for. It is definitely the overall profile they would want to see as a strong candidate. Right. Thank you for that. Um, there is another question which I would like to ask. That is uh, the prospects after returning to India. How much... Uh, uh, of uh, education abroad would be of an advantage for the student after returning to India. Uh, see, all these uh, universities who offer courses uh, and, uh, you know, these universities are well respected and their education is recognized across the world. So even if a student plans to come back to India, their education will be recognized by the organizations in India. So, uh, you know, whenever you plan to come back to India, you know, be rest assured that your degree, your education will be valued because obviously you will be going for a private job and not a government job. So, you know, all the private players in India, whether they are multinational or they're, you know, based within India, they, they would know about the university, about the skills you've gained, you know, uh, from this course. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, whichever destination, whichever university you choose, your uh, degree and your uh, skills you've gained from that uh, university, it will be uh, recognized and respected in India as well. Right. Um, how, uh, what, or rather... Um... How, do, how does one set up his or her own practice in these uh, different countries? Now, if I have to, uh, I know the licensings are different in US and UK, like you mentioned, sir. Uh, but would there be a, uh, another set of requirements for setting up your own practice, let's say in the UK or US? See, uh, in, in terms of uh, UK, I can uh, definitely say that, uh, you know, when you're there as a, you know, a student, you know, you get to, to do, uh, you get a two years post study work opportunity, uh, right? Which means that you can work by setting up your own business while you are there on the post study work opportunity. Is something which is uh, a bit tricky because there are a lot of licenses, which is a lot of uh, uh, permissions which is involved. 
uh, in terms of setting up your own business in these uh, countries. But uh, uh, at the same time, it's it's worth exploring. It's worth uh, checking what are the options. And uh, you know, firstly, I would suggest that you uh, start practicing with some reputed organization. Once you gain the experience, then you eventually start uh, something of your own. And during that time, you can you know gain experience of uh, how to set up your own uh, organization as well. And I think that uh, that should apply to us as well. Right. Thank you. So uh, there are a few questions in the chat box. Uh, first one is by Samruti. She's asking if these universities are approved by COA, that is Council of Architecture. Well, I, I would uh, request the uh, US expert to answer that. So that is there. OK, um, uh, yeah. So I am not sure if it is accredited in the, under that particular uh, thing. But then uh, for US schools, it is NAB accreditation, that is National Architectural Accrediting Board. That is what they look into. If you go to that website, then they have listed which all school comes under this category. OK. Right. Samriti, also, I think you can look into Council of Architecture website. It is uh, pretty clear on which are the, which universities have been approved by. Yeah. And so there is one more question uh, from a student. Uh, I had a question regarding GRE in US. So many colleges have dropped GRE after the COVID situation. Would it continue in this coming years? Um, I'm not sure about that as of now. Um, some schools until even Jan 2022, yes. they have. I'll ask one last question, that. my own thing. And then... Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> Nobody can, uh, uh, you know, guarantee the H1 sponsorship. It depends on what category you fall under, whether, I mean, they're changing the H1B policies as of now. It's no more the old policy. Um, your uh, average salary should be $88,000 per annum to apply for a H1B in the recent news. That's what they've informed. But then earlier, the H1B pattern was lottery system. So your company should be willing to do the documentation for you and you should fall under that particular salary slab. Only then you can apply for H1B. Yeah, so there's one more question. Uh, if okay, when should one start preparing for the exams and the entire process if the student is looking for you know 2023 intake? Okay, this is almost like a year process for US. I mean, if you are planning for 2022 uh, August, then you, your uh, preparation should happen right from uh, August 2021. By uh, September, October, if you're ready with your GRE, then you can start applying because September, October, the university opens their application for the upcoming intake. So ideally, it's like students should start one year ahead of their intake year. Yeah, see, uh, why would we even suggest that is for some reason, if the students are not happy with their own GRE scores, they still have another one or two months in hand to retake the GRE and have a better score. That's the reason. And the major intake for US, especially for architecture, is August intake. Mahesh, uh, can you take up this question? There's a, a question from Tejas. The course which he's looking in UK is unaccredited. So does this mean we can't practice in the form or can't set up a practice? Uh, uh, Tejas, the thing is, yeah, in UK, we have universities which is uh, under uh, Council of Architecture, like uh, Liverpool, London, Manchester, Sheffield, Wales. So it will be easy to uh, to get uh, practice and advantages for you in UK. So no need to worry on that. So you can practice and you can uh, start your own business. That's why Tarang said, so we have two years stay back option is there. So that's your wish. So you want to do our own business or you will get a job. So that's ultimately your decision. Um, in the interest of time, I think uh, we can uh, conclude the session. Uh, I just have one last question, probably. Um, I would like to know what the role of IDP would be after the admissions. 
would it also uh, give some sort of uh, you know uh, security to the student who is uh, uh, taking an admission or you know uh, continue its relation with the student after the admission right so i i'll take up that question so like i mentioned in my uh, slides as well idp offers services uh, after admission as well which includes uh, pre departure seminars in, in uh, what i mean by pre departure is that we ensure that all the students are uh, given information about how to open a bank account in different uh, uh, destinations how to uh, how to get an accommodation there uh you know uh, whether it's uh, booking booking an accommodation or uh, also some of the so some of the other services like personal insurance and other other services which student require after in, after their uh, uh after their admission so you know these are some of the services which we offer so you know like i said you know all you have to do is just get in touch with the experts in order to get more information on that so just to add i have shared the idp or the virtual counseling link in the chat box so any students willing to take a virtual counseling you can log into that link and i've also you know put a link to put in your details so that we can also get in touch with you yeah so thank you so much for the opportunity given to us you know to address your students ma'am and uh, thank you principal sir for giving us opportunity also special thanks to vidya professor vidya who coordinated for this event thank you so much to all of you and thank all the students to you know for being patient and listening hope the session was useful to you in terms of deciding uh, to study abroad for your architecture programs all the best to all the students thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, and thank you team idp thank you tarun thank sir you. Thank for you being so much. part of this thank you thank you all thank you all thanks bye uh we will quickly move on to the next session uh we have the team from victoria university of wellington new zealand victoria university of wellington is a globally ranked university located in the vibrant city the capital city of new zealand the university's faculty of architecture and design innovation is ranked in the top 150 universities worldwide for the subjects of architecture and built environment it offers the following postgraduate programs we have masters of architecture for two years leading to professional registration masters of uh, interior architecture again for 2 years master of landscape architecture for 2 years master of architectural science which is for 1 year specializations in project management and sustainable engineering systems master of architecture for 1 year uh, where the thesis program is leading to the P leading to a phd study uh, we have the pleasure of having professor mark orel schnabel here with us He is the dean of the Wellington Faculty of Architecture and Design Innovation, chair professor architectural technology at the Wellington School of Architecture, Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand, and former visiting professor at School of Architecture, Sheffield University. As dean, he is focusing on creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship that enables innovation, sustainability, and cultural responsibility. We are also joined by Ms. Andrea McLeod Curry. who is the university's international regional manager for south asia and the middle east based in mumbai welcome uh, to both of you and i hand over the session to you. wonderful thank you for having us i would also like to uh, introduce uh, my colleague uh, professor andre brown he is also on the talk he is the head of school of architecture and will be also available for any questions and comments Welcome, Professor. Um, thank, uh, thanks for having us, everybody. And I uh, will jump directly into a small presentation, giving you an overview of our school, how it's organized, what it's structured, and uh, then uh, Andrea will uh, uh, give some other informations around uh, enrollment and other details, and then we will have uh, time for questions answer for everybody. I. Uh, I'll try to share my screen and we going here. Uh I hope you can see the shared screen now. Yes, professor, we can see. Wonderful. Okay. Here you see a screenshot from our building, uh it's just from the entrance and uh, where we located right in the city uh, of Wellington. You obviously have heard of New Zealand and you have maybe have seen the movies Lord of the Ring 
or the hobbits. Uh, we are uh, located in the middle of Middle Earth, right, right in the center of it. If you look now at a map where uh, New Zealand is located, you will find New Zealand always at the very corner. So we have here the, the fuller map, which is called the One Earth, and you find us uh, in the very uh, right hand uh, corner there. Here, this is the only map I found where we are in the middle. But you can see the relationship of where we are uh, in relationship to the Pacific uh, and the Indian Ocean. If you arrive in Wellington, that's what you see at the airport. Uh, it doesn't say uh, Wellington, it says the middle of Middle Earth. It's a pun on that uh, the, all the, the film production and everything related to it was uh, done here in uh, Wellington. Obviously, New Zealand is famous for its uh, rugby players, also recently became quite famous for uh, the uh, um, uh, cricket and the cricket team. So you may have uh, heard about it. So we are very much engaged in different kinds of sports and activities. Here you see the island. New Zealand is basically made up of two very big islands, a couple of smaller ones, and Wellington is really located between the North and the South Island, right in the middle of the country. These are some screenshots of how the island uh, looks like from the, from the plane. And this is how the inhabitants of the South Island look like. Obviously, we're very close to the South Pole and uh, most of the um, uh, 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 inhabitants coming for, uh, directly from there. While the North Island is a bit more uh, covered with uh, other animals and uh, other people, which you know from uh, all what the stereotype is. But uh, New Zealand is very rich, uh, similar to India in a cultural context. We uh, have a very strong pride on the indigenous culture, which carries through to everything from architecture over daily living. And here just a couple of screenshots of uh, buildings which you find in in the larger Wellington region. And you see from the vernacular traditional over modern uh, um, building uh, using the different materials, the different expressions of uh, what it could be. Nature is very great and big in New Zealand. You find that everywhere. And the connection with the outdoor is really one important thing of the style of living and, uh, and studying in New Zealand. That's Wellington, a small town. Uh, directly at the harbor, you see the harbor, and in the middle of the picture, you see the university at its main campus, a little bit on the hill, and then you see the downtown CBD a little bit more to the waterfront. Here another uh, shot from the city and uh, how sort of uh, one engages with the water and the city life around it. Our faculty is located right in the center of the city in the CBD. Uh, you see that here where the error is, but basically it's really uh, very close to the creative area of uh, Wellington. You find there a lot of uh, small architectural offices, design offices, different kind of startups and uh, established uh, enterprises. So this is really the creative hub of the, of the capital. And I would uh, actually say of whole New Zealand. Here, this is now our uh, faculty building with the School of Architecture and the School of Design Innovation uh, located, uh, surrounded by a park. And we have everything in one building that is from the library over all the studios, workshops, uh, offices, and so on. You find it within our building. In the middle of it, of the building, we have a great atrium in which, uh, which allows for different activities to take place that can be from student activities, student exhibitions, over just uh, lounges and uh, chairs when you, you know, want to relax in between your courses. Now, the School of Architecture offers these degrees, architecture, interior architecture, landscape architecture, history theory of architecture, and building science. Two of them, the architecture and the landscape architecture programs, are both accredited fully programs and uh, is, uh, can put you on the pathway to become a licensed architect. Now, sure, the program of uh, architecture uh, looks as uh, we do a very strong on design of the built environment. We looking really at 
diverse projects which explore architecture and question architectures from different standpoints, we are taking a pride on that uh, we connect very much to skills, technology, buildability, the outlook of the professional, the professional degree, and that it is fully accredited and treasured by the industry. That puts us also apart from other areas where you can study architecture in New Zealand, that we have our name, that we really be uh, connected with the industry of buildability, but at the same time really have the creative uh, uh, context. Interior architecture is very human focused, is about, uh, has a whole range of topics, is uh, at the same time experimental, entrepreneurial, and uh, in your training, you'd be specializing a bit more in the area which of your interest of uh, interior architecture. Landscape, obviously landscape New Zealand is very big. It's, uh, we are all surrounded by it, but we are looking at uh, how the landscape can become part of an urban context. So what is the urban landscape, urbanization, sustainability, biophilia is a very core of the, of the topic. It's not a destination, it's more a starting point. Uh, it's all about collaboration. That's uh, similar of how the practice actually uh, works uh, and about community building, about uh, outreach to the community, not only the community of students, but actually a very strong connection with the practice and practicing uh, companies. Uh, architecture history and theory is a degree, if you're interested in more in the, in the theoretical part of architecture, where you look at different cultural historical aspects, obviously the political and social uh, context, and you develop your focus with your supervisors around what you want to explore in the history and theory context. We also offer a degree in uh, building science. Uh, building science looks at basically all the technology and hardware within the architecture. So it's not only the form and design and the colors, but it is much more about what is the technology within there? How do you can uh, uh, react to, uh, how can the building react to the environment? How can you be sustainable? What are the elements to have passive energy, passive cooling, passive systems to really reduce the carbon footprint in, uh, with the building which you uh, develop? So that by that, we're looking at building systems, healthy environments. So what materials do you use? Are they healthy? How is this context? Uh, it's an industry changing research. Uh, it's, we want to make a positive impact on the building industry and allow you to go out there and find a job uh, which really uh, brings us uh, forward in that in this area. The other area is the is the building uh, is uh, project management uh, where you coordinate uh, the construction, you manage the whole construction, the process, you become a specialist with a, a very uh, practical expertise. Uh, you have a very technical aspect uh, and expertise to it, and uh, you find probably directly a job with your graduation or earlier because it's really sought after the, the, the skills and the knowledge which we offer you in uh, your training. This is a, the basic structure of our degree. So we have a one in the undergraduate, we have a coming one uh, first year where all everybody is together. Then in the bachelor, two years, uh, uh, depending on the on the discipline from architecture, interior landscape, history, the building science. After that, after the bachelor, you enter a two years master degree, or you come from with a bachelor which you have done already, and then enter into the two years master degree, and uh, you see then the, the master's degrees relating to the to the different uh, disciplines. So again, here this is a three years undergraduate and the two years uh, master's uh, thing, for example, if you do uh, the architecture with the accredited degree. These are courses which, which we offer. They range from architectural design studios, theory criticism, professional practice, obviously what uh, is relevant to the, to the practice uh, context, and you have electives. While in, this, uh, in the next term, again, you have a capstone project in the design studio technology, and you be prepared for research 
for the for the second year of your master's. So that is the first year of the master's. The second year, uh, the, the the same thing or related is in the interior of architecture program. Just obviously focused more on the interior or the landscape program. You see, it's the same structure, the same system for the first year of the, the master degree. The second year of your master's degree, what we call the part two, is uh, a 12-month thesis. We call it research portfolio because it's not only a written thesis, it's highly focused on the design work and you generate design work. There is a certain written part, documentation to it, but it's really a one year's uh, uh, research on a topic which you are interested in or your supervisor is interested, so you de develop together with your supervisor the, the field and the topic on which you then develop over the next 12 months. The Master of Architectural Science is a little bit different. Uh, the Master of Architectural Science is only a one year's program, so three trimesters. And uh, so you don't have two years, you have only one year, and after one year, you get your master's degree in architectural science. And there are two uh, areas, project management and sustainable engineering systems. These are areas uh, which we offer at the moment, area of interest for your research thesis. It goes from the critical reflective over sustainability, well-being, performance technology, there are certain subsets, and we have all different supervisors and experts in that area, and you would be exposed in your first years of your master's degree to these different areas, and by that, in the first year, you will then have discussion with the different supervisors, different areas, to really find the, uh, what you are interested in, develop that with your, with your supervisor, so that you done in the second year can, can continue doing that. Here, quickly, to, to round up everything, uh, some shots of the studios. You see here a design studio on the right side. On the other one, uh, you see on the top a, our virtual reality studio where we all have different uh, facilities in VR, AR, XR. Uh, uh, downstairs, uh, you see a studio, general studio. Uh, we use uh, robotics, architectural robotics to in the digital fabrication. So you learn about how you program, how to use the, the robot, how to how to deal in digital fabrication context. Uh, also, the workshops. There is a, it, we have technicians which help and train you so that you can use different tools and different methods to do a one-to-one -one or a model construction. What you what you are interested in. Please visit our website. There is more information out there, uh, and uh, I'm now at that moment stop sharing, and I would hand over then to um, Andrea to add anything she wants to do in that moment. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Mark. Hi, everyone. I'm going to keep my section brief. Uh, basically, what I'll be telling you about is admissions processes to the university, what you need to prepare for, the types of documents, testing, etc. Um, and then after that, I'll be introducing you to one of our present students so that he can give you a uh, you know, a personal perspective of what it's like to study architecture at Victoria University of Wellington. So Mark has outlined uh, the programs that we offer, what types of careers they lead to. So if you are interested in applying to the university, we have one main intake in the year, which is February every year. That's when most of the architecture programs start. You need to be applying before the 1st of December, the previous year. It is good to do it a little bit in advance for that so that you have enough time for all of your processes as well as your visa application. You can make your application via a registered agent. So, for example, IDP, who are on the call this morning, are one of our agents. They are able to make the application for you. That's sometimes easiest uh, if you don't have previous experience, for example, in, in making visa applications as well, because they can help with that too. You are also welcome to apply to us independently as well, if you don't wish to, uh, to use an agent, and we don't have any application fees. So what we require from you, we need around a B average in your bachelor's degree. And depending on uh, the 
basically the grading system of the university that is usually somewhere around 70%, but that can differ from university to university depending on what your, your minimum passing percentage is. So you give your academic transcripts, you give your completion certificate, which can be a provisional certificate as well. Now you need to take an English language test. If you're taking the academic IELTS, it's 6.5 with no band less than six. You are also welcome to take either TOEFL or Pearson as we accept those two tests as well. You provide us with your passport biodata pages so that we have your identity uh, documentation. And then you'll give a portfolio. Very important part of the process, make sure that you select examples of your best work um, showing your your design abilities as well as any technical abilities. We are usually looking for no more than 10 examples of your best work. Now, when we talk about costs, the two year programs cost approximately 40,000 New Zealand dollars per year or 20 lakhs per year. And the Masters of Architectural Science, which is the one year program, costs around 60,000 New Zealand dollars or around 30, 000, uh, sorry, 30 lakh rupees for the full program. I've got my email address there on the screen. You are welcome to contact me for any assistance. I am the university's international regional manager based in Mumbai. So very easy to get in touch with me in the same time zone. Happy to advise on programs, on requirements, on anything that you need really within the application process. So please do get in touch if you are interested in enrolling. And I have uh, uploaded this presentation to the, the Google Drive that's been set up so that you can access these slides later too. We do offer scholarships. You need to first apply for your offer of place. Once you have the offer, you can then apply for a scholarship. Now, when you're doing the first year of your master's, you can apply for either the Tongarewa Scholarship or the Wellington Graduate Award, which uh, awards between five to $10,000. When you are about to enter into the second year of your master's, if you're doing the two years option, you can also then apply for the master's by thesis scholarship, which awards up to 15,000. Now, each of these scholarships are primarily academic merit-based, so you usually need a good GPA to be able to qualify for them. One of the main questions uh, that we would get is, what happens when I finish? Um, what type of career options are there? Can I stay back and work? Are there good opportunities for a architect in New Zealand? And we'll make sure that we leave some time at the end for questions as well, if you do have specific questions in this area. Now, when you finish a master's or a PhD in New Zealand, you are entitled to a three-year open work visa. So there's no type of criteria for that visa. You don't need to be earning a certain amount of money or anything like that. You just need to have successfully graduated from your program you get your work visa, you can work for anybody you want during that time. And if you find a good job, then yes, there are definitely um, avenues to then stay back longer in New Zealand as well. Um, as I said earlier, I will be saving this, or I have actually already saved this presentation in the Google Drive. So you can go into each of these links that I've provided. You can check what are the types of salaries for architects when they've graduated, what are the types of career outlooks. Um, there, is, there is a good avenue for a career either as an architect or as a specialist in construction project management in New Zealand. We do find that our, um, our graduates do end up you know, making a, making a good career for themselves afterwards. Um, and uh, construction project management in particular is quite in demand at the moment over there. So please do have a look at the links if you are interested. Do get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to provide you with more information or any assistance you need. I would now like you to introduce you to Mohesh. Mohesh, I hope you're, yeah, you're still there. Yeah. So, yeah. Mohesh has just finished the first year of his Masters of Architecture Professional and he's about to enter into the second year, his thesis year. So he's going to give you a student perspective of what it's like to study at Victoria University of Wellington. <coughs> Thank you, Mohesh. Over to you. Yep. Um, thanks, Andrea, for calling me for the presentation. So um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Mohesh. Uh, I'm currently doing my final year which is my master's program in architecture, um, which is a professional two-year course. So um, the student life um, here in, involves a lot of cultures, events, and clubs, and especially the student association. 
um, which is a uh, very accommodating and for this for starters we have like 99 plus clubs for you to like choose from and there's a lot of support from the uni and the career hub and the student learning and who really support you through physical academic and financially even um, emotional hardships making sure that um, we are not alone so it is such an um, open and inviting atmosphere uh, to learn and live actually and uh, not just learn there's um, a wide range of uh, sports and activities that you can be interested in uh, the uni recreation club and and uh, if you uh, see in our instagram page you can see all the informal activities that are happening in the architectural campus there's an informal atrium we have lawn spaces um, you can check out our instagram um, page for the exciting pictures and like finally um, even though uh, we all love to come complain about deadline and projects but uh, there are so many of the classes at uni that is like really interesting and engaging and being taught by people who are generally passionate and energetic and well experienced and and they give you uh, advice on a personal note and and they make make sure you feel accommodated and uh, last year I was in an e- exhibition committee and before and uh, we hosted a year end exhibition for our architectural stream and we shared like a uh, food with our cohort and classmates and it was so exciting and this year i'm a student ambassador myself uh which is a casual job for the students to welcome the new coming students to the uni and um, currently for my thesis um i'm in the construct conceptual shift stream for this year i have chosen a topic that is related to the phenomenology in architecture in short about how we use our senses to inhabit a space so that's my thesis and uh, um andrea has given a brief description about the career life here but i'm just going to make it short saying that career scenario is like really good and that way especially for a professional course like mine new zealand architectural offices uh, prefer fresh minds and master graduates for the pos- positions of graduate architects in their office and it is such a uh, social and very friendly atmo- atmosphere that that is here actually so Thanks Mohesh. Should we uh should we open it up to any questions the students have now? Yeah, we can do that. Thank you all for your presentation. Can we have any questions from the audience? Uh you can post it on the chat or um raise your hand so that we can um uh see you and also let you speak. okay before we get any questions probably i will put forth a few that has come in in the during the registrations um one would be uh, on any specific licensing required uh, to be a part of the group of architects or um, also to practice architecture in uh, new zealand so um to practice architecture in new zealand um the masters of architecture professional is the appropriate program for the students to take because that is the program which gains them their registration as an architect then they have their provisional registration and there's a certain number of years that they have to practice under another architect i think mark or andre can uh, can advise on the exact requirements in that area it would normally be another 2 years after completion of the master's degree um you can't take longer and students do work during the bachelor's degree as well as the master's degree there are a lot of practices willing to offer part time work and internships right thank you professor uh, i also remember seeing the video about um, you know energy efficiency and technology related to that so there was a question about uh, what is the scope uh, in the field of sustainability or the future opportunities in the field of sustainability in new zealand it's one of the focus areas of the school and of the country um we have experts both in the area of building science here dealing with um passive systems and other means of achieving low carbon um and zero carbon buildings um um also in architecture itself 
There are people like me, Brett Peterson Zari, who have booked on biophilia, um, international acclaim in, in that kind of area. So we, we have that as a core element of what we do in the school through all um, of the degrees that, that you've looked at, the architecture, interiors, um, landscape, and um, the bio building science degrees, project management, and um, you know, sustainable engineering systems. So it's a core part of what we do, and we are therefore able to offer electives in second, third, and fourth year that allow people to specialise that in that area. And then in fifth year, um, it is one of the popular demand areas in terms of thesis. Right. Thank you. Uh, if you could explain a little more on uh, the one-year course on Master of Architecture with a thesis program leading to the PhD. Uh, the, the Master of Architecture is a one-year program. It does not have to lead to a PhD, but it is one of the potential routes. Um, it is possible simply to take the Master of Architecture as a degree in its own right. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it depends on your career aspirations, whether you want uh, a research-focused degree uh, rather than the Master of Architectural Professional um, allows you to go on re to research but is more focused on someone going into practice. If you want to focus on research, the the more efficient route is to take the MArch degree, the Master of Architecture, as a one-year course, and then that, that will pre-qualify you to enter into the PhD. If you do well in the Master of Architecture degree here, it also means that you are strongly placed to get one of the scholarship places for the PhD. Uh, we do have scholarships for PhD offered um, three times per year and uh, we have students in architecture who get uh, those scholarships. So it depends on your focus. Uh, but it, some students do take the MArch degree without continuing to PhD. It, they might want it simply as a, a Master of Architecture qualification in its own right. Right. And what would be the duration of the PhD? Um, three years minimum, four years typically, somewhere between three and four. It depends on the progress people make and what kind of work they are in. Um, there isn't a fixed time, but uh, that's the, the typical range. Right. Right, Professor. Um, some of them would also like to know if they can work while studying or work after you know, classes. Uh, Mohesh might be able to give yeah. a bit yeah. more information. Um, I can that. answer to that. Yeah, while work, I mean, like while studying, you can actually work because um, you'd be definitely having a day uh, more than a day, or or probably we had like two days um, in the week for us to like uh, work and and take care of our um, design projects as assignments and and all that but also you'll be having enough time to take a take a part-time job or or in any uh, any field that you're actually interested in mm -hmm. and uh, do you also have facilities on campus for stay yeah um, there are halls of uh, residence actually mm -hmm. there are many um, campus hostels as well mm -hmm. and you need to apply it before and uh, when your admission is getting done okay yeah. So the, the hostels, uh, students have the option of having either meals provided to them or they can choose a hostel which is more like an apartment setup. Um, and some of those hostels do actually have dedicated um, like architecture and design rooms for the students to be able to work on their projects alongside. So you can choose one close to your campus, you can choose one that has the right type of facilities that you're looking for. Okay. Um, I, I request the students once again that this is one of the best opportunities that all of you have got to interact directly with the uh, professors of the university. So if you have any questions, please put them forth.
if there isn't a question coming forward, I can possibly add a bit more that sure, um, sure. Definitely. One, of the, one of the things that might be worth pointing out that is a recent piece of news is that there is a, a national competition in the master's degree for the top student in New Zealand and uh, our School of Architecture won that award this year. So um, the New Zealand Institute of Architects regards our top student as the uh, most outstanding student in New Zealand this year. So um, that's wonderful. That's a good, good news for us in December. Congratulations, and that's wonderful to hear. It certainly is good news for us. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a couple of words for the accreditation. If you complete your master's program, uh, you can then go your your architectural sort of accreditation pathway. But that's not only in New Zealand. There's also other countries which recognize our degree as the pathway for the accreditation. Now, you can work in an architect's office without having the architectural license. Any office, when you're good enough, will will employ you, and that's not a problem. Only if you want to offer, open up your own office and work independent, then you obviously need the, the architectural accreditation. But the degree sets you on the pathway that you can get that one in many countries in North America, Europe, and uh, elsewhere. As I believe in India, you get your, uh, you be, you can become an accredited architect after your bachelor degree. So it's not, it's independent on the masters. That's the, right. The nice thing, the nice thing if you do, for example, the architectural science degree is that it's only one year. It'd be very, after one year, you have the full qualification, basically a slightly different way what, is you, what you got from your architectural degree. In architecture, uh, in your bachelor, you have basically everything what you need as an architect, and you can get your Indian uh, registration. But with the Master of Architectural Science, you get the whole expertise in sustainability or in project management. And that sets you up in a very different uh, pathway where you're not only a design architect, but you're actually an architect who understands the construction and the delivery of your design. Right. Okay. Certainly, you can also do that. Only uh, you can do the two years architectural uh, masters, which just gives you a more in-depth quality and expertise in the, the design area. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I don't think we have received any questions yet. All right, it's it's fantastic. So uh, it's all clear. If you know, uh, uh, have have a look in in uh, a bit more about uh, New Zealand, what it offers you. Um, obviously, cricket is a big item here. You know, when you come over, you'll be able to join the team. Yes. Uh, but not only this one. Uh, it's uh, as you know, we are at the moment COVID-free, and uh, how things develop. So it is a very good place to explore your studies. Uh, because you have a very different environment, very safe environment. Uh, the living environment is good. The quality of life is very high. You have enough time to enjoy your life outside of the university. There is very different, uh, a lot of student clubs, student activities are possible, but also independent of that, this is just really at your doorsteps. You walk out of, the, out of your house and you're right in the middle of a very an exciting environment where you can enjoy uh, your life and your studies. Right. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, all of you, uh, for joining us and uh, sharing uh, uh, such in-depth uh, understanding of architecture and how it is in New Zealand. So I'm glad uh, that all of you could make it. And uh, uh, knowing the time difference, I know it has been a great effort from your end. So thank you so much. And, thank you uh, for having us. I appreciate yeah. that. We'll, if we there's any question touch. coming up, please contact us any time afterwards. Yes. We're happy to, to help you there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andrea, as well. And thank you, Mahesh, for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Professor Brown. Um, You're thank you all. See thank you. you. Yeah. See you. Bye. Bye. Uh, before moving on to the next session, we will take a small break of 15 minutes.
uh, it's 11.15 now, so we join back at 11.30 for the next session. Thank you. Uh, I request all of you to stay online and um, rejoin and, and not leave the platform. Thank you.